In this video, we're going to focus on the sequencing basics for the Squarp Hepix. Please note that as of now, we're looking at the first firmware and it is actively being worked on. This is a MIDI instrument, so in other words, it sends and receives notes and controls, but not sounds. This is very important to note if you're expecting it to generate any type of sound. On the top here, we can see two screens. Now the one on the left here, we can see two sets of quadrants. So all of these quadrants align with these knobs. And over here, these align with these knobs. So if I want to control that one, I would turn this knob. Here's a mute button and here's the row of tracks. So I can mute a track and then unmute it. Now this track is set to JU06, my Roland Boutique. I'm going to play it on my keyboard. I'll go into videos how to set that up, but currently we're just going to look at the step sequencer. So we can draw in notes here. We don't currently hear the note as we draw it in. We do see it right here, C4. If I press play, we can hear it. Now, as it's playing, I'm just going to hold this note down here. Now it shows the properties here. I can bring it up to a D. So I just held down the note and changed it. Let's say I want these two notes. Hold down this note and over here, see it selects that whole area. I can hold down all and then change the notes. Let's say we want to add something here, an F. Maybe E flat. So you can create patterns quickly this way. You can also zoom out. So when I zoom out here, we can see this is as long as the pattern is. Let's say I want this to go two bars. So I hold down the track, it says length 16. I can just turn it and there it is, two bars. Okay, great, but let's say I wanna just add notes here. So I'm gonna press track, we're gonna go back to this view. So when I add a note here, we can see on the grid it's longer. So you can change note length by holding it down and this is note length right here, so that lines to this knob. So I'm going to turn it. Now it's at one half. So if I zoom in and you hold on to it, it says one, so that's one step. It depends on what scale you're in. So I can zoom out and see the whole thing. And we'll just enter in some notes here. Okay, that's great, but let's say I wanted to just work on this part. I can do that. So we can change the loop here. So if I hold down the left arrow and then press here, now it's just going to loop here. So I can focus on this and what I want to do here. Okay. And then I can press both and it'll leave the loop mode. So you can work on things that way. So let's say I want this part, but I want to transpose it. So what I'm going to do, let's set the end loop here. So it's just going to loop this part. We can see on the screen what we just did. And I'll press play. Hold down all. Now wait. When I change this, we can see it changes everything. So the selection is actually selecting the entire pattern. So what I want to do is hold down Alt and then press second. Now it's going to toggle in to just this screen. Now if I change, it's not changing the other notes. So let's open up the loop, both arrows down, and we can see it's now going to loop the whole pattern. Okay, so I see all these notes are longer. Let's do all. And then second, it's going to go to the screen here. We're going to turn that to one. Now they're all one length. So I want this note to be shorter, like one quarter. Let's do that for this one too. Now what I want to do, I want to start in this screen. So this is screen one, this is screen two. I can either zoom out and it'll just show everything. But I want it to start on this screen. So hold down second, press play. Now it'll start from that position. Let's say I zoom in and go to the right hand side and then I press second and play. It'll just start there. 
Let's say we want to change the pattern length, but not to a bar. Just hold down the knob and turn. And now we can see that it moves by one. So I can make things that are offbeat. Let's make this all an octave higher, all, and then bring up the octave. Now BPM, let's turn it up. Turn off BPM, we're back in the screen. If you don't know where the notes are, just press step and it jumps to the nearest note. So it's fun to draw these in. Let's uh, clear everything, all, delete. Let's hold down pattern. Turn it, let's make it just one bar and zoom in. If we turn this knob, it's kind of like a page up, page down function, whereas this is the smooth up and down. And this, what note we're changing is the bottom row here. That's for your reference there. You can see on the screen, it's moving up and down. So let's put in a couple notes in here and let's hold down the right arrow and press right here, which is the last part of this. Now we're just gonna press play. Now let's change, let's make it all higher octave. Okay, I don't know where the notes are, press step, there they are again. Can hold down to the note, drag it down. Let's make this a shorter note. So we can change that, which is nice. Let's octave up again. So press stop, now we're at the notes. Now here, we have U time. If we hold down the note, let's turn U time. Now it changes the timing of each note. So I can go in reverse, this one move forward. So you can hear that changes. And we can also change the chance, so hold down the note and turn the chance down, let's say 65. Let's make this one, it says roll, so let's turn that up. You can hear that note is rolling because I turned up a roll. Let's turn the chance down on it. You can hold down on a note, and what it does is it captures all the values here. So if I make a new note and hold it down, we can see it's kept that chance of 80%. Let's say I wanna change like the length of notes. Let's make them like one quarter. We'll put some notes up here. And now they're all a quarter length. If I wanted a note to be longer, when you enter it in, you can just make it like say four steps right there and just draw it in and now it's at four steps. And I'm like, oh, I want that one changed. Just turn it down. There it is. And then here we have math. So if you go to the right, the first number here is one. So this is one out of three passes, for example, or the second or the third. So every three times it passes, it'll play that note. And I'll also do the chance, so it kind of like rolls a dice every time. Let's turn up the chance all the way on this one. So the third time it passes through is when it changes. Let's press all, go up an octave. So if you want to set a default first and then enter in a note, you turn it first. Every time we enter something in, it's gonna have these settings. Let's say I have two notes here and I wanna select just vertically. Hold it down, you'll see it's red, and then press second, and now it's gonna highlight this column instead of just that area. It works this way too. So for example, I wanna change the notes, just drag them up here. So I have keyboard, sending in to this track. So I'm just gonna play in C note, it says learn C. If you click down on a knob here, it's going to go into learn mode. So as you can see, it knows what chord you're playing. So you play a chord, let's say a C chord here, and then you just press this step. 
Now it just added that chord. Let's make a different chord. And I'm going to press this. Now we can see the screen moved down to the lowest note. Let's do play that chord again, and then back to this chord. Okay, so now it's just going to play those chords out. We can click it and turn off learn. If I hold down second and press plus, we can duplicate the pattern and I can scroll over. You can see it doesn't duplicate the notes or anything. Let's press second and minus. It's going to bring it right back. If I press second and right arrow, it's going to duplicate the pattern. So if we switch the screens, it looks identical. Let's say I want to change these notes here. I'm going to press this button and it's going to select all of them, but it's also selecting the other notes. So I'm going to press second and now it's just going to move the notes on this screen. And to listen to this part, second and play. Now it's playing through, as you can see. Let's say I just want these notes to play right here, so two times, and then paste it here. So let's zoom in. We're going to press all, second, and it's just that screen. Copy. Now we're going to go over here. So we're going to press all, second, delete, all, second, paste. So now we have identical screens right there. Now I did put in a feature request. I think it should be all second. And then if it's in this mode, it'll just stay in that mode until we click back. Anytime we do an operation, it can be a little cumbersome to keep pressing it over and over again if you want to make multiple edits. Another thing we can do is we, let's say we press all and it's selecting everything. If you arrow up, it actually transposes. If you press arrow left or right, it actually nudges the notes. So let's press all delete. Let's hold this down. We see we're at two bars. Let's just do one bar. Now we'll go into the track. I just pressed a note. Let's press this. We just clicked it in and now we're in learn mode. So now I can do like a chord. We'll do that here. Now I'm just going to do a G note down here, here. And there. And then I can duplicate it, so second, and then right arrow. And now it's playing that two bars long, we can see here. I can press record and play notes on the keyboard. Now let's switch to track two which is my JUO8. So, go into learn mode there. Let's do a chord. And just entering in, let's just put it here. So very basic here, just to show how you can start Say I want to expand that, so let's go four bars. So I'm going to move over here. I'm going to use our learn function. Just putting in some chords here. You can just listen to it from here by second and play. Now we can do a whole lot more than this. I just wanted to show you the very basics of step sequencing. So stay tuned because I'm going to show more functions that this can do.